How are you? Have, how have been your day? That doesn't sound too <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> are you all tired already from lots of sessions, interesting things? I can understand that and I realize that the last slot on uh, at a day always is kind of a different slot, but we'll try to have some fun and have a nice session, learn some little things. But there's one thing. If there's any performance pro in here, I'll spot you. <laughs> and so um, this is a beginner session. It is beginner level. There will be some things where you will be like, whoa, what is that? I've never seen that before. But this is by one reason. Because um, if you've seen it now, once you need it, actually, you have already seen it once and you know what it does and that there is something like this. So maybe some parts might be a little different, uh, difficult to understand, um, but um, it will help you in the future for sure. So, um, and as I said, let's have some fun. So anyone that just wants to cause trouble or doesn't like beginner sessions or fun sessions, please leave the room now, <laughs> last chance. So, um, our topic today is high performance Drupal, four times high performance for Drupal, and it's done step by step. Um, what we'll today cover are different things, but let me begin with a very, very sad story. This is actually a real post on groups.drupal.org and it goes like this. Where is the power of Drupal? I hate Drupal. Isn't that sad? <laughs> so, and it always overloads the database. Sometimes the Lord reached 200 and it never reached it before. Enable core cache and the server go down the next day. I think that's a real sad story. I got you the link, so if anyone wants to verify, you can do that. This smiley is also really sad that this was happening. So um, I think let's do something against this. Let's get you some knowledge so that this is never happening again. And I never have to read something like this again. Um, in general, there is still a very much need for high performance. It is like um, that, um, very simple, if you have a faster site, you earn more money. You get higher in Google, you, uh, your visitors are like, I mean, if you were a visitor and you come to some site, you want to buy something, and then you're just saying, oh, it takes two minutes already. <laughs> I think I'll just leave and buy it sometime else. And sometime else usually never happens. So um, there is a need for high performance. And it would be good if the Drupal community as a whole would have that knowledge. And that's kind of what you want to do. So my site is so slow. Help. What can I do? Your visitors are going to love the fast sites. If you have a fast site, they'll say like, oh, this site is really slick, and um, it will automatically gain you an advantage in comparison to your competitioners until they see the session, uh, session recording, obviously. But till then, you got a little edge. Um, the other thing is, um, and that happens more often than you can think of, you have a nice website, and suddenly some big media comes, like bignews.com is coming to you, and it's saying, hey, it would be really, really great if we could feature your website. We really think it's good. And you say, well, let's do that. And then the big day comes, your website is featured. You could do millions of sales, and it's down. Because it was just not made for this amount of traffic. So the real bad here is, how do I get a blazingly fast site? I want something like this. Let's first take a look at how to do things wrong. For example, what I could do is, um, well, I've now tweaked my sauerkraut settings, and I enabled some other sauerkraut settings, and it's still not fast, like xyz.com. 
why is that? I tweaked them as long as I could. And sauerkraut in this case is APC, but we are not yet there. So I just replaced the word because it could stand for anything. Like you're just trying to really um, change one thing and you tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, and nothing happens. Um, the other thing is, well, I've set up 10 SlaveDB servers. My site is still slow. What's happening? I read on the internet, I just need many SlaveDB servers. Then it will be fun. The other thing is, I've set up NGINX with advanced egg and Varnish combined with empty cache with views opt cache, but still nothing happened. So this is a person that really has a bleeding edge of things and the newest technology, and still, it does not work. So I asked that person, have you set up Mancast? And they were like, oh, what? Never heard of it before. So the last thing is for our high, high traffic day, and that's kind of a true story, in a way. I've set up the static page caching for all the pages. The high traffic day can come. What could possibly go wrong? And I can tell you what went wrong. I was on the machine, and I had prepared a little more than this would suffer uh, would show. So I had done some tests, etc., and it looked all well. And I was on that machine, and I was watching the Lord of the machine, and suddenly there was a spike, and the Lord was going up from two to three, to four, to five, to six, to twenty, to forty. I was pressing quit to try to stop this Apache so that I could, could do something about it. And while I was typing, I was really feeling like in a movie when the bomb is about to explode. Uh, while I was typing, it got slower and slower. The keystroke was taken, the next keystroke was taken, and then, boom, server froze and was dead. We quickly switched over to a failover machine so it wasn't all lost, but it was really, really scary being on the system and you cannot do anything. So there can always be things that can go wrong. So you always need to have like an emergency case. So, but in general with high performance, we all wish that we had the magic pill. You just swallow one pill and your site is fast. Wouldn't that be nice? But unfortunately, optimization is a process and not a pill. So from the examples that we've seen before, you can kind of see um, now um, in a more explanation. Ah, and here's what I need. <laughs> so let me explain this a little visually. Um, if this is your performance setup and you have it nailed down every year, it will probably hold good. But if all what you're doing is putting a nail in here and you're making it more and more and more, and this is still not holding up. What is that? So this is really, if you're just tweaking one thing, it won't work. You have to work on all pillars and you have to make sure that you have a good base performance then this will work good. So, let me go back my presenting device. The other thing is um, that you're just optimizing things, but you don't know where the pain is. Where is the pain? What is really happening here? And um, if you don't analyze carefully, you end up in scenario one, where you're just trying to tweak some things that leads to nothing. And the other thing is that you're reading some posts on groups.drupal.org and there's some nice technologies and this password and this password and you think, well, I just need to install them all and then it will work. We are again at the magic pill here, obviously. So, but it's not like that. Unfortunately, it does not work like this. So, do you really want to reinvent the wheel or do you want to rather stand on the shoulders of guidance? 
Another thing is, um, and I've explained this already quite a lot with the example, you're featured on the bignews.com, you didn't test, your site is down, your boss will be very angry. So just summarized again, uh, you can optimize one part to death, just some random parts, some parts as passwords, or things without testing. Ugh. I think there are a lot of ways to fail. That is all so complicated. <sighs> is there then really nothing I could do to make my site fast? I really only want to have a fast site. Is, is this so much? Well, the easy answer is hire a performance consultant. Hire a performance consultant right now. Call 0800 Drupal Performance and enjoy blazingly fast sites. Call now in this second and you will have blazingly fast sites like me. You'll get more sales, more Google hits, and everything. So, that was it. Yeah. Now you know that performance is really difficult. And you should hire a performance consultant. And here's a number. Any questions? <laughs> well, okay, okay. You, you got me. I'm just kidding. I think having a performance consultant can in ways be the right choice. Because for example, if in two weeks you got your high traffic day, it's probably good to contract with any of the big providers that are providing services in terms of high performance and letting a professional do this. Because in two weeks you will never be able to get, gain all the knowledge, uh, even with this talk, um, to be properly prepared for that. But I really think we should take this knowledge into the Drupal community. And that's why I'm here. Because we want today to stand on the shoulders of giants and walk the paths of our ancestors. So here's your mission. Loading mission file. <laughs> we have Drupal 7. We have several performance problems. And those are real life problems. Not really real life problems because I've simulated some things, but it kind of, it's all a little um, based on my experience with um, certain client sites where the most interesting things were happening. You can't imagine. So, DDoS pages are feeling really slow, sluggish, and big. And they're really unhappy. This is so heavy, Lord. We feel like. Rrr. And let me get Mrs. MySQL. She's also very unhappy because she needs a timeout. And to talk it in her words, it's like, I really need a select break. And Mr. Apache is sweating on the Lord. Well, I give it 100% all the time, but this is just too much. And Mr. Coach, he's really buggy. And you should be really careful about them, him before he's a real troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> so to just summarize it all again, we got the Drupal pages. that feel sluggish and slow. MySQL, Mrs. MySQL, who's really unsatisfied and has so much to do. Then we got Mr. Apache who is um, sweating under the Lord, not just because of the heat, and Mr. Code, the troublemaker. So, your mission, and you're all with me, uh, all in with me here, is to investigate and fix. Let's go. First of all, we talk about server performance. Let's measure it. So, on not the system I'll show you, I've seen these numbers. And I was really shocked, like, what is happening here? Um, we get to that case later. But for now, um, we can just take a look at the top command. And um, this is one way to measure things. Um, you're just logging into the server, you run top, and you're just noticing how much Apache is using. In this case, you can see Apache is like, fully working, and MySQL is also fully working with two slides. 
This is something very handy. I won't go into much detail here, but you can later get it from the slides or um, from the session recording. Um, this is a drush command where you can easily get the time that it, a page is taking. So if you're trying to optimize something in the code, this can be really useful to kind of automatically do it and not have to reload the page. Is it working now? Reload the page, is it working now? Um, so just to give you the edge. So, and now we come to the four shoulders of the guides. I think my mouse fell off. Okay, let's go here. Um, that's press file, APC, memcached, and boost and launch. Um, so how can those um, help me get a faster site? Pressflow was really, really needed for Drupal 6, but I know that there's still people running Drupal 6 site, and they will also run Drupal 6 site for some while still. So it's still useful to know if you want to have high performance with Drupal 6, you need Pressflow, absolutely. Drupal 7, on the other hand, fortunately already has many things that Pressflow had. So um, there has been really great progress in terms of high performance for Drupal 7. Nothing else is needed. So now we get to um, APC, which is the alternative PHP cache. It's highly recommended. It's very easy to install. It's um, a PHP extension, which means um, that um, if this is your code, again, um, what PHP is doing, it's you taking all of these files and it's compiling them to something. And this is what is executed then. But obviously, this takes some time, as you can see. So what we're doing with APC is we're storing a copy of that here. So if anyone wants to have the same files, what we're doing is we're just taking this again. And we have that. And another question, obviously, is for APC, is it worth it? So let's see. So what we see here is kind of, um, we're going to the network tab. I right clicked and selected select element, inspect element. Now I'm reloading the page here in the network tab. What we can now see is kind of um, um, how the page is loading. That's very, very handy for optimizing. And we can see it's a total of two seconds this needs. And it looks just like a normal Drupal site. So, what is happening here? Let's show the other example of, oops, if you have APC enabled. So again, um, we open the network tab. And then we reload the page, select our network tab, and then after a short loading time, we can see we are now at 1.31 seconds and we are even logged in. So ABC is really gaining as much. In this example, why is this Drupal site so slow? And that's kind of a warning I want to give you here, is um, 
if you install lots of modules and you don't have APC, you have a problem. And um, so let's get back to presentation. I would say yes, APC is worth it. Um, I installed quite a lot of modules there just to make the site slow and this can be enough. There's also a little bug hidden here. As I said, the code is a little troublemaker here. And then we come to another optimization and that's memcache. Who of you knows what memcache is? A little. So, um, Again, if you Check one, two, perfect, works. Okay, so um, memcache is very simple in a way because um, Drupal is caching things. You obviously have all been in the caching sessions, so you know everything about it, no. <laughs> it's like um, this APC, we're just taking the finished page request and we're storing it. We're taking a finished build block, we're storing it. We're taking a finished filter format, we're storing it. And there's one problem with databases. Databases are really good when it comes to rela relational data. That means you have several tables which you have to combine and then you get all of this data combined back. But a database is not good for just storing data in and getting it out on a prefix key. There are optimizations that are out of scope for the session that can do this also with databases, and those will happen in the future, but until it happens, we're gonna go with memcache, and um, memcache is really just providing one thing. You got a variable called apple, you're storing a 10 in it, and if you're getting the apple out of it, you'll get the 10 back. So it's really, really simple and it's very fast. So um, again, let's see, is memcache worth it? Here for our little scenario. We had a um, page load time of 1.11 for it, and we'll take a look at another video. So 1.16 seconds, now we enable memcache. That's a normal Drupal settings file, so I'm just putting the configuration in, like cache back and cache default class. I've downloaded the memcache module, so it was quite easy once I had the daemon running, and we will reload the page. Wait a moment, and here we are. We're down to 996, not bad at all. So um, we got some out of that. Um, please note that um, the standard Drupal caching is, is still off at this time, so the next comparison will be a little unfair, but um, even then I can assure you that it's, it, it wouldn't be that fast. So um, the next technology we're gonna check is um, Boost and Varnish. Um, Boost and Varnish do something different. Um, again, we have a cache, but um, this time it's not inside of Drupal, but it's in front of Drupal. So if Drupal is um, kind of here, for example, and it's producing all of these little nice glasses, um, then we are getting them out to the client. Then obviously to manufacture a glass takes some time. So what we're doing is we're just taking a copy of the glass and we're storing it here. And that's our uh, varnish. So in memory, we now have a copy of the glass. And as long as the same input comes in here, we get the same glass out. But instead of Drupal answering this request, varnish is sitting in front 
and it's giving back kind of the copy of, copy of the glass. I'm sorry. Um, Boost, on the other hand, is very handy because you can save files to your file system. That means, for example, if you have a website with thousands of pages, but they are seldomly changing, it can be very, very rewarding to save those files to the, to the file system. And um, if you, for example, restart the varnish cache um, due to some reason, um, all of that caching is gone, and also it's kind of, because it's in memory, memory is a limited resource, it's a scarce resource, it's an expensive resource, it's kind of um, limited, so it's a very good idea to just combine Boost with Varnish, unless you're using NJNX, but that's not what I covered today here. Um, and then you kind of have a cache that's not so often changing, and you have a cache that's always having the hot content. So what the visitors are currently looking at is um, what is there. And one is can be a little difficult to install, though usually the real problem is not installing the package because on Ubuntu, for example, you're just doing app, gap, install, varnish, and you have it. But it's more like the configuration that's difficult. Um, and for that, um, for Drupal 6, we had a very nice um, boosted varnish configuration on our blog. And um, we are currently updating it to Drupal 7. There will be coming a blog post shortly. I just didn't get to the little tweaks in the end. Um, and then you can very, very easily have boost and varnish running together. And you won't have to worry about things that can make uh, using varnish complicated like we'll see a little later. <coughs> so yeah, that sounds pretty complicated. Is then everything what we have here, is it worth it? Take a look at another video. <coughs> so this was our memcache. Now we're gonna enable varnish. There's a certain rule to just quickly disable varnish. We reload the varnish server, and now we load it once to get the cache to load, and now we load it another time. And there we go, five milliseconds. So, um, this is really amazing fast. And um, one is it's also very good, kind of, while Apache would be sweating, even if it was giving out boosted, uh, like static HTML files, one is it's really, really good if you need high throughput. So it's a very suitable choice for a high traffic day. So, Let's take a look at the mission update. The anonymous pages say, well, we are blazingly fast, but we still feel a little big. But we are quite happy. Mrs. Myers-Girl says, I have less to do now, but those authenticated users, I don't really like them. And Mr. Apache says, I have much less to do now, but again, those anonymous users come, I still sweat. And I really hate those anonymous uh, UTM requests. So what's happening? Uh, that was actually what was happening when that one server got down. Um, the site in question was using Google Analytics, and there's two ways to set up URLs for Google Analytics. One is you're having them with question mark and then the UTM IDs. The other one is um, you can just have a hash mark like an angel. The problem was um, they were using question marks. So we are getting a new cache entry for everything. And this is just a little varnish tweak that's included in the uh, boosted varnish configuration um, that will just remove everything Google Analytics related and um, then you don't have this problem anymore. Yeah, as I said, blog post will come soon. So take a little look at client performance. 
on some pages, again, um, I've seen page load size from 300 kilobytes and page load time from 20 seconds. And the reason was that it was not compressing things. So um, again, the best way to measure this is using the Google Chrome developer tab, uh, which I've already shown in previous videos. So why are those pages so big? And the answer is probably compression and aggregation is off. So we need to compress the JavaScript and CSS. And in Drupal 7, it's really, really easy to set up. It's really an administration menu. You go to development performance. There's this little uh, tweak where you can enable those settings, compress cache pages, aggregate and compress, aggregate. And this is something you should really do before doing a go live. But one caveat, you need mod rewrite and mod headers. Um, for this to work. So continuing, um, there's another way that you could choose, for example, if you're more on Drupal 6, um, you could just get in mod deflate, which is doing all of this for every file that Apache is serving out. And um, it can put quite a high load on the server. So it's a good way to combine this with Varnish because Varnish is kind of caching those objects and if you set the times right for like two weeks or whatever and um, then Apache does not need to regenerate and regenerate and regenerate again. Also a good idea always is to minimize the CSS and JavaScript source files and to set the proper caching headers. That's especially needed um, for other Varnish configurations the boost advantage configuration is, is set up so you don't need this caching headers. You can set this directly in configuration. But for example, for the Lullabot configuration, you need to set this hashing headers. And um, this is again done on the performance tab. You cache the pages for anonymous users. You have a minimum cache time of five minutes and an expiration of one hour. In this case, Manish would cache those pages for one hour and the client could cache them also for a certain amount of time. That can be very useful because if you're saying like, well, I don't care if the client has like a five minute old version or one hour old version, this can save a lot of bandwidth and this bandwidth can be crucial if there's many, many users at the time. So um, in Drupal 6, you would use press flow. There's an option to use external <coughs> caching or you can use um, the boost advantage Let's take a look at yes. Sir. Who's the varnish is not uh, varnish with the module boost. Yes, it's a combination oh, of varnish okay. and boost. Um, let's take a look at the mission update. The anonymous pages now feel fast, slick, and they're just happy. Really happy. So additional techniques you could use is um, you could, for example, use a content delivery network. Um, there's a Drupal org CDN module. And this is really useful if you want to have for a user um, the, um, the files very close to their location. So for example, if you are serving from America, but those people need to have it in China in some little village or something, but you know that there's kind of an um, distributor near there, then you can push it to the CDN and um, it will be distributed around the world and your users will get fast content. So this is another optimization technique that you can apply. Um, there's also some new techniques that probably not too many have heard about yet. There's Ajax and Pjax. Um, and Ajax obviously is clear in views. You're only reloading the content that you need. And PJX is kind of the same, but it's changing um, the URL at the top. So uh, you can use the history to navigate back and forth. And so for example, if you had a big site, for example, with an image gallery, and you, you could just reload the images, and that obviously gives a faster feeling, because the users are not feeling, um, well, the whole page loads again, etc. And you can do this without having to preload all the images which especially for mobile can be quite problematic. And so PJX is definitely a module to, to check out and see what you can do with it. Um, there's one quick tip in terms of client performance. Um, 
Sometimes you get this unresponsive script error on loading a page. In our case, this was Colorbox. And there were just too many links, so Colorbox needed to run, and we didn't want to change the Colorbox code in that. So um, the idea is very simple. You're just setting it to run into the background just 100 milliseconds after the site has loaded. And that's usually enough because most users are not as fast to click. Um, so, and then you add the old code in the middle. Coming to module performance. Um, module performance, um, you can sometimes have execute active handler things like six seconds um, in a memory usage of 100 MB, 200 MB. It's important to know what's going on. And one possibility is to use xhprof PHP extension for that. Um, it's well integrated via the devil module. And um, again, I'm having a little demo for that. Oh. And here we take a look and we'll, we'll find out why this site is so slow. So what we are seeing here is um, I'm putting an xhprof equals one there, but that's just needed because I've got some special optimization techniques in there that are rather advanced. And um, usually it's enough to enable xhprof in devil. And then we are taking a look at such a report. And what you can see is um, that we have 1.6 seconds of page load times. Um, and we quickly find the caveat and that really is um, Drupal is scanning all files again and again. And this is an old core version. This is fixed in your core versions. But it's just one to show you how such a little problem can add one second to each page load, while the normal page load would be quite fast because it's just like 300 milliseconds. 300 milliseconds can be too slow also in certain circumstances, but one second is usually like, that's not acceptable for certain use cases. So, and you can also see the memory usage more to the side. So there's some kind of pitfalls. Um, if there's a variable set on each page request, your database server will have real problems. If you're setting anonymous dollar sessions um, for saving simple data, for example, for a low bandwidth flag, don't do this. This will disable anonymous caching for varnish and other things. Instead, use JavaScript to set receive the cookies and change the page. That's working much better. Um, if you install so many modules, it can be really problematic, especially if you're not having an APC. Um, another thing is if you want to load 5,000 nodes with views, you'll have like um, a memory usage of 300 MB. Um, that's happening with open layers. Um, there's an advanced solution um, which is called Open Layers Quick Query. It's in my sandbox. Uh, to improve the performance of modules, um, one of the biggest secrets is to use the block caching. So um, enabling block caching and configuring proper block caching can make a real difference for authenticated users. Because most blocks might be really specific just either to a role or to a user or to a site or to a page. So block caching can be used much more than it is normally used. That's kind of an optimization I do on my, most sites that are coming in. And there's something else which is very nice because there are some modules that are saying this block is not cacheable, and, but you really want to have it cacheable and you want to have control over it. And it's block cache alter. Um, this needed a patch with context. I think it's applied by now, not totally sure. And, um, but if you use block cache alter, you can for each block directly set how the block should be cached, and this is again very helpful. Also, set up use caching. It's obvious, but you won't think how many sites I see where it's 
not done. Um, there's a nice list of performance core patches in the Drupal's groups that Drupal Org High Performance, and I invite you, invite you all to join it because um, it's a really nice group. You learn lots and um, nice people hanging out there, and we are just two less people yet. Come all in. So uh, I already showed the XH4 performance video. Let's take a quick look at the mission update. So it's only Mrs. MySQL that's a little unhappy because she just feels kind of slow sometimes. In terms of database performance, what's important is to, um, there can be queries that are slow like 10 seconds or so. And then imagine several users doing this 10 seconds slow queries and you can imagine how the site performance is. So what you want to do is you want to enable the slow query log. Then for Drupal 6, there's the B tuner module. Really nice. Unfortunately, no 7 port yet. Maybe someone wants to sponsor. Not sure. Um, but you can directly use the MySQL tuner script for 7x. And then there's explain queries. Um, but we, before I explain a little explain, um, very little, um, we get to some common tricks you can do. Um, you should use InnoDB. Um, it's the default on most current MySQL configurations, but especially with Drupal 7, really recommend it. Um, be aware of the barrier. You need to set no barrier equals one for X3, X4 file systems um, on your Linux, Kels, Ubuntu. You can't imagine how many threads are there for um, from developers that were saying, well, I updated Ubuntu, now I can't use MySQL locally anymore. It's just getting all so slow. So um, no barrier equals one is a secret in that. But be aware a little, if you want to use or need to use this in production, you need special hardware because this could lead to data loss. And um, a useful guide is the Ratchet Handbook. And I see that I'll put the Bedley URL in the comment. Um, another thing I highly recommend is to use the XFS file system. It's a good and proven file system for MySQL databases, but it's important to size the partition size according to the use case. So um, one way to fix the slow queries is you use explain for the queries. That means you're using the select statement you got out of the slow query log. You're putting explain in front of it and uh, then it tells you something like, um, this is using a temporary table, this is using a temporary table, and this is not using indexes. And um, if you don't know what indexes are, look it up on some um, SQL board in that. And then you add some indexes, run explain again, and um, hopefully it's faster. So let's take a look at the mission update. But before we get that, some Werbung. So a little recap of the best practices. Um, you set up the base performance. Then you want to have kind of your own high performance stack that you know and trust. It's not too difficult, um, as you have seen, um, installing Monish, installing APC, etc. I'm also, I promised this to someone and I'll do that. I just didn't get to it, unfortunately, before the session. But you can expect in the commands in the groups.drupal or high performance a little script that's kind of getting you through um, the setup of all of this. It was a little too, too much for the session. Um, remember to analyze the pain points first and um, where's the problem? Is server based, client based? Is it modules? Could it be the database? Really know where's the problem and then solve it and optimize those pain points. So let's take now a look at the mission update. Mrs. MySQL is very happy. Apache is really happy. And the Drupal pages are also really, really happy. That means mission completed. Wake up now. <laughs> Questions, please. Yep. There's a microphone in the room. Do 
this can be a very basic question for sure. a beginner. Uh, the MySQL, the database, I, I have many. If I delete many of the that I don't use, is it uh, helping the performance? Um, usually, unused databases, if you're not using them, are not kind of, they're taking space on disk, but they're usually not um, important for the performance in that. There's one thing to know about deleting things on the database. This can be very difficult to delete things. Um, actually, most production shops don't like to delete because if you're deleting on a production system and you are having some logging enabled, you need to delete all of it as well. And MySQL will be very busy with the deleting. So usually, you just um, extending storage instead of <laughs> deleting things. Usually you size it appropriately so that you don't need to delete. But if, if it's a developer machine, I mean, sure, delete, but production wouldn't do it. Also, um, the, the MySQL, the user, is all root. But uh, if I change the rule for only this database, then is it also helping performance? No, it's not helping. OK, thank you. Further questions, please. Okay, if I install Varnish, which is a, a cache in front of Drupal, is there any use of uh, installing APC or Memcache anymore? Yes, for uh, authenticated users, and obviously, you restart Varnish, your timeout for Varnish expires. I mean, you can set it like one year, but it's sometimes this year is also over, and then your pages are expiring, um, so, for this case, you will still need to um, have APC and memcache, and also, um, usually, if you um, if you want to use the system as an administrator, which sometimes happens to add new content, you probably want to have it fast as well, and not having to wait like ten seconds, even though the user see it very fast. Okay, I reformed the question: Is there any use of installing APC or memcache for the site? sites where uh, which uh, varnish is uh, okay the easy answer is return. yes there is because caches can expire and um, it's just a good base line you just install it it usually works and that's also what you get in different configurations on all of the high performance hosting managed hosting services Thanks. Sure. Next question, please. Um, you said that uh, there is specific varnish configuration for, say, Drupal 6 um, on a server. Um, what if you had Drupal 6 and 7? Is there a, a kind of middle ground configuration, or can there be configuration that will help both sites? Um, uh, actually, the configuration works for both sites. Um, there's one little trick to do, but that's more on the Drupal site, and that's what I explained in the blog post. Okay. And so, but you can use the Boost Spanish configuration. I even have a module from way back in my sandbox um, that just emulating Boost without doing Boost, when Boost was not yet available. Okay. So, so you have that on yeah. And uh, what you th saw there as, as Varnish configuration okay. was also the boosted Drupal 6 Varnish configuration. So. Okay, so that'll work. Yep. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you, you recommended using both Varnish and Boost together, but I've been reading some articles that recommend one over the other for different contexts. Can you explain the difference a little bit more or why they would be used or the, the pitfalls? The people that are saying kind of that um, you don't need to combine Boost and Varnish together are kind of like saying, well, it's duplicated functionality, it's duplicated things, and in a way they're right. But the problem is they argument like this. They say, well, um, if I have all those files, the Linux kernel will have the hot files in memory anyway. So it's very similar. But this argument does not hold with Apache, because Apache is not 
made for big load. If you're just serving static files, um, it will still be much slower than Varnish, and it will also not hold a lot at a certain level, because it's not made for that. It's, it's big and blown in a way. So my approach of using Boost and Varnish is kind of to use the um, expiration features of Boost, and especially the disk cache, which can grow very, very large, which I have always <laughs> available, in combination with a hot memory cache, kind of. And that's the same here. For example, if to remove the double caching, you could um, remove the block caching or set it lower um, for the disk, then you would get that advantage. But usually it's no problem because the varnish takes that memory. The Linux kernel is not using that for caching, so. Okay. Is there any problem in installing both Boost and Varnish under Pressflow, Drupal 6? <laughs> None at all. Okay. The block post boosted varnish is talking about that and works exactly like that with press flow. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Other questions? Sure. Four minutes left. <laughs> now is your chance for questions. Uh, little advertising for panels because there's a wonderful caching mechanism too. For each pane you can select the caching time and additional uh, dependent on the arguments, especially for views. Yep. Just to repeat that, um, in panels, there's also a great caching architecture. And um, again, I recommend memcache, which makes this, again, a little faster. And in panels, you have different panes. And in those panes, you can select how long to cache each pane. And you can also do it based on the views arguments, which is very helpful. And that's what he was saying. So, further questions? Have you done any acting before? Hmm? Acting or performance or theater? <laughs> <laughs> no command. <laughs> <laughs> Take the survey, rate the session. I'm hoping um, you'll forgive for those little things to wake you up. <laughs> and I hope you had fun. Thank you.